Now, I'm thrilled to be joined by middle grade author and former journalist, Melissa Roska. Melissa happens to be a certified NYU life coach, an active blogger on the middle grade book website, full of interesting interviews and fun content from the mixed up files of middle grade authors, and a professional joke selector for Reader's Digest. That is a profession I'm really interested to learn about. <laughs> Melissa is one of the 13 incredible co-authors of the Jewish-themed coming-of-age anthology, and just so happens to write one of my most cherished coming-of-age short stories titled Grandma Merle's Last Wish, which we'll chat more about in a bit. It's such a treat having you on Eat Train Talks. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, E. Thank you so much. I'm honored to be here. And um, I just want to say on behalf of myself and all of the other middle grade authors, we think you're awesome. We oh, think thank you're doing you. a great job for the middle grade community. And you, you're amazing. So there oh. you go. Thank you. It means a lot. And I, I know this is just one of the many interviews that you've taken part in, but I've got to say Coming of Age is the first anthology I've ever read and certainly the best that I'm ever going to read because it touches on such important themes like anti-Semitism and just kind of coming of age in general. I mean, that it is called the Coming of Age Anthology. And my first question is basically... How did you get into this whole coming of age anthology? I'm I'm sure everybody interested. Every, <laughs> um, I some I'm I very nervous. Meant. No, everyone's interested. I'm interested, and you're interested. You yeah. know, um, to answer your question, E, um, my friend Jonathan Rosen and I, for many many years, were talking about the importance of having a middle grade anthology about bar and bat mitzvahs. So, you know, we were batting ideas back and forth and chatting about it. And then Jonathan came up with this amazing idea to really go for it. He got the connections. He met up with um, his co-author, Henry Hertz. And together, the two of them did all kinds of magic to make sure that lots of different authors who are interested would um, be able to participate. So really, um, I owe it to Jonathan, and he's amazing. If he hears this interview, I kind of hope he doesn't, because he already has a very swelled head, so we don't want to swell his head any <laughs> further. But thank you, Jonathan. He was amazing. Yeah, he really is. I had the chance to interview him. He's the first interview in this whole panel, and He's so great. And just the whole story of coming of age is it's one that I really love learning about from so many different perspectives, yours, Laura's, just everybody involved. Exactly. Exactly. And your short story, Grandma Merle's Last Wish, includes thoughtful themes like courage, acceptance and family. The protagonist, Bella, hasn't been raised in a traditional Jewish home. Bella's family doesn't really observe many of the Jewish holidays, except that they do partake in decorating a Hanukkah bush to celebrate Hanukkah. And it's pretty clear Bella will not be studying for a bat mitzvah. But when her aging grandma claims her last wish is for Bella to become a bat mitzvah, Bella realizes it may be time to start following in the footsteps of generations of Jews before her. And this may be a short story, but it's certainly an emotional roller coaster. Will you share the inspiration behind your short story? Yes, absolutely. Um, you might find this very surprising, E, but um, the story is actually not based on any reality. Really? It's completely fictionalized. Um, I came from a traditionally Jewish home. Mm -hmm. I went to Hebrew school. I had a bat mitzvah. We celebrated holidays. So my experience was nothing like what I wrote about it in for Bella, for Bella's um, story. Also, I was extremely close to my grandmother. Um, her name was Molly. She was adorable. She was even shorter than me. I'm tiny, but she was about four foot eight. She was really, really short. And she was originally from Russia. And we were extremely close. So, so the inspiration for the story, it's just based on my, I was so lucky to have a grandmother who I loved and who was kind and caring and 
who was close to me. And I thought, wow, what if some kid is not that lucky? What would happen if I made up a grandmother and I made it in her last wish and then she had to start doing the spot mitzvah preparation? So um, that's really where the inspiration came from. Really? I just, I can't believe that none of the events happened to you, but it's also really interesting that you, like you loved your grandma and you thought, what if a kid didn't have that same connection with their family and their heritage? So you really kind of wrote the opposite of what happened to you so that more readers, because there are a lot of readers who don't have that connection with who they are and their family. So you really wrote what a lot of kids are going through and you actually did a really amazing job it's just so crazy to learn that you didn't have the same experience as Bella because you wrote it so beautifully and also I've got to say that the Jewish thank you thank you for writing it I've got to say the Jewish side of my family is also really short so (laughs) okay good (laughs) phew yeah (laughs) I feel your pain. I really yeah. do. But you have a chance to grow, which is yeah. really good. My chance, I can only grow backwards, which means shrinking. But there yeah. we go. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm always interested in discovering more about the main characters and the stories I read and imagining what they do next. So will you share what Bella might be up to now, that now that she granted her grandma's wish and became a bat mitzvah? You know, it's funny. I, I adore this question. And I really, I came up with this whole scenario in my head about what Bella would do and what she would think and what she became as a grown up. I mean, I was going a little bit, the wheels were turning, but I'd like to think that after she became a bat mitzvah, she and Grandma Merle became very close. And she would visit Grandma Merle in Florida and Grandma Merle would come and hang out in New York with Bella they go to shows and they might go to the 92nd Street Y here in New York to hear a lecture or a klezmer band or something Jewish and cool. Um, so that's her immediate, what would happen. Then my mind went to high school, of course, right? So yeah. maybe she gets involved in a Jewish community project or something Jewish. I don't want to say that she's going to become ultra observant because she's not, and that's yeah. all right. And that was my whole point of writing this book. I mean, sorry, this um, short story. There are so many different ways to be Jewish. You don't pick one and you don't have to dictate. No one can dictate to you how to be Jewish, how to feel about being Jewish. And so I don't want to say oh, all of a sudden Bella's going to become orthodox no she's not but um maybe in college she might join a Chabad or a Hillel or she might get involved in some way you just never know yeah that's really the story behind my mom as well like she um, wasn't super observant but she joined joined Hillel with a man named Hillel actually Um, no way (laughs) (laughs) and he kind of connected with her heritage and I think that I can told I it's so just wonderful the themes that you included because there's no way to be there's no perfect Jew because we all can be Jewish in different ways whether we decorate a Hanukkah bush we become a B'nai Mitzvah or we become super orthodox and go to Hillel or Chabad so I think it's just while your short story was a short story I just certainly want it to become a whole novel could you tell it to my agent and then maybe we can work on that I'll I'll tell her you said so because in the back of my mind again the wheels are always turning so I I might consider that thank you I love that idea well thank you and also I I I might have to pause this interview because my mouse um my mouse isn't working it won't won't scroll I can't get to my script don't worry no I well actually I know what you're gonna ask me next Okay, so let's just now on to the next question. I know that Melissa already knows what it's going to be. So let's just hop right into it. The reason is that he prepared me so well for this um, podcast that, you know, I can read his mind. He can read mine. 
you were basically saying, talking about anti-Semitism, what's important is that part of the proceeds of this anthology go to fighting anti-Semitism. And I think if I got your question right, and I didn't write it down, I'm sorry, it's all up here in my head. Um, you were asking about the fact that Jewish people in general were not exactly, sometimes we're told our stories are too Jewish mm -hmm. or our books are too Jewish. And where do we fit in in terms of an underrepresented group? I think that was the question. Yeah, Am I that close was. to it? That was that was right. That was right on. Phew. Thank you. <laughs> so um I had just written down, which is interesting. Um Jews are my I we're a minority, right? Mm -hmm. I actually Googled this. We are only 2.4% of the United States population. Wow. 2.4%. That's tiny. Um, and that actually includes non-religious Jews. So the people who might identify culturally as Jewish, but they might not be religious, like Bella and her mm -hmm. family. They're in the 2.4%. So as a Jew, we are a minority group and we need to own it and be proud of who we are and stereotypes need to go, you know, flush them down the drain because um, that was the other part of your question. Actually, yeah. there are lots of stereotypes about Jews. And I personally find them tiresome and inappropriate and not true. Um, the other thing, growing up in New York, you had asked me if I had experienced any anti-Semitism directly, I believe, in your question. Mm -hmm. And growing up in New York, it's easy to think, oh, we're all Jewish here. There's a bagel place and yeah. a corner. There's, you know, you can go, it's just so Jewish here. I'm near the Jewish Museum. There's a temple down the street from my apartment. My neighbors, we're all Jewish. I, our apartment came with a mezuzah. So it's easy for me to just take comfort in that and to forget, oh, well, I'm not really a minority, right? This isn't a mm -hmm. problem, but it is. Yeah. And we all need to remind ourselves not to be complacent. Once we're complacent, then it becomes dangerous. Yeah, that's such a great answer. And I really agree because it's just shocking to learn that we're only 2.4% of the entire U.S. population, yet a lot of our, like, books that are Jewish-themed, like, they're considered, for instance, too Jewish, or they're not diverse, but we're such a diverse group of people, and it's just having a, a, a <laughs> <laughs> um, just, just having an anthology that you can look to that really shows, well, it's just, for instance, the publisher, um, just Al, I, Albert Whitman. Albert Whitman. I was, yeah. uh, oh, okay. and, you know, while, while I'm messing up like this, I think I have to get my mom to turn the mouse on because I have a whole oh, script that I was going to say. Don't worry. I even know what the next question is, E. So I'm, I'm ahead. Of, we're all good. This all is right. All I just, good. Also, I just really need this mouse to turn on because I can't <laughs> I do know. anything without it. <laughs> Well, that's annoying. I know technology is great until yeah. it's not working. But no, what you were saying is um, Albert Whitman is the publisher of Coming of Age. You're right. Yeah. Um, I'll just start over my response. This mouse is annoying. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Want to borrow mine? Yeah. <laughs> I'll just grab it. <laughs> yeah, grab it. Grab it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think your answer is just so true and i really agree it's shocking to learn that we're only 2.4 percent of the entire u.s population but none of our book none of the jewish themed books are considered diverse and yeah. having an anthology to look to like coming of age it just makes me so happy like finally finding that book that i need like Aww. all of the short stories like because i'm gonna be, be become a b'nai mitzvah a bar mitzvah in two years and like i i love middle grade books they're my favorite genre my favorite age group to read in but i like there are a lot of oh maybe hanukkah books or yeah. per, for instance purim they're starting to get in, into purim books now yeah. passover but That's a minor holiday right yeah. if we think about it 
Cora, I'm sure it's fun. It's a minor holiday, even Hanukkah, let's be honest. Yeah. It's a minor holiday. And that's what we see. You're absolutely right. In yeah, the I, so-called Jewish category. Yeah. And just finding a coming of age book about B'nai Mitzvahs, it's the best. And it Aww. makes me so happy. I know that's, and another great thing about it is the coming of age anthology educates others about the name it's fuzz and our heritage. So that's that just adds on to this incredible book. Oh, that's so nice of you to say. Thank you so much. Well, thank and, you. And that was really part of it when at the beginning talking about when Jonathan and I started talking and it wasn't out there and talking about Jewish books in general and then Jonathan and Henry Hertz made it happen. And then we were thinking about kids like you. What would you get from this? What would you learn? What would you want to see? Do you see yourself in any of these stories? And that's really what we want to see, that kids can look at these stories and say, hey, I relate to that. Or maybe, no, I don't relate to that, but isn't that cool? Yeah. And I know that so many kids see that in the Coming of Age anthology. And my next question is one that I really like asking authors and just all people in the book industry, like who inspired, was there someone who inspired you to pursue writing, a parent, author, teacher, role model, really just anybody? You know, this, that's a great question, and I have a really weird answer. Um, I always knew I wanted to be a writer. It never crossed my mind that I would do anything else, that when yeah. I was little, I wrote all the time. I wrote, I love to write letters. I wrote the weirdest letters. I, my parents actually kept every single letter wow. I ever wrote to them and they numbered them. So I found them in a box in their apartment. So I always wrote. And I even remember when I was little, I was riding on my bicycle and just thinking to myself, I'm going to be a writer. I just knew that. A and bike rider? You are. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> I want to be a bike rider. I'm yeah. Writer about bikes. Yeah. But I was on my bike riding and thinking that I wanted to be a writer. And, uh, <laughs> it's something I always just knew. Yeah. And also, um, I went to, I don't know if you knew this, but I went to this really weird, hippy dippy progressive school in Greenwich Village. So my teachers always knew I liked to write. So they encouraged me and um, they didn't make me do math because I was really bad at math. They thought, <laughs> oh, you know, poor Melissa, she cannot do math. Let her do some more writing. So I was able to write as much as I wanted. And my teachers um, at City and Country always encouraged me. My parents encouraged me. My friends encouraged me because they liked to read what I wrote. So I would say that encouragement came from so many different sources but mostly it came from within yeah I totally that understand sense. that it, that does make yeah. sense yeah and yeah. also I want to go to your school I because it just sounds like <laughs> such a fun place and the teachers are so supportive that that's the that sounds like the best feeling like you get to learn what you want to learn yes exactly it's it's actually the oldest progressive school in the country it's wow still there. it's um on well, now it's on it changed, it's on 13th Street now, but it used to be on 12th Street. And I wrote all about it in my first middle grade novel, um, Cat Cleaning Comes Clean. That's the inspiration for that one. So the characters are a lot of um, people I went to school with and the teachers. We called them by their first names. And it was just a free for all of do what you want and be free and, and do what you love. So I think you would be very happy there. If you ever come to New York, um, I will take you on a tour of City and Country School. I promise. I would love that. And well, now it's just, it's time for my final question of the interview. The question I ask yes. every single one, basically yes. everybody I interview. Yes. Um, if you could be or meet any literary character, fictional or real, who would it be and why? This one is too easy. It's like you handed it to me. Um, <laughs> I am a huge, 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 keep saying huge fan of um, Harriet the Spy. It's my favorite book in the world. Have you read it? I haven't, but I need to. You need to. And I'm going to give you homework. You have to read this book. It will change your life, E. I promise you. But 
the reason why I loved Harriet, why I'd want to be her, and I just, everything about her rang so true to me. She's an only child. She grew up in New York. Her parents were very loving, but quite distracted. She loved to write. She, but she was braver than me. She could do anything and say what she wanted and, and just be out there. And she was so genuine and so authentic. And I admired her so much. And I wish she were real sometimes because I would just love to meet her and hug her and yeah. just talk to her. But it's Harriet M. Welsh from the book Harriet the Spy by Louise Fitzhugh. Well, I certainly need to read Harriet the Spy. And I know that you are a lot like Harriet from the descriptions that I've heard. Also, I, I saw your post that you, that said I was today years old when I spoke up when, when a man interrupted me. So right. in, in just small ways, you're acting like Harry the Spy, speaking up for yourself. Aww. Thank you. That's really kind. Thank you. And everybody, my guest today has been the extraordinary Melissa Roscoe. <laughs>